Вообще идет вроде. Идет, идет, идет. Не надо, не надо, не надо вроде. И здесь по не раскатанному. Да. Все правильно, я сейчас туда кидаю сыну. Я ее спрашивала, с какой стороны тебе встать? Сюда пофигу. Мы раскатываем в эту сторону. Тебя развернула всю мать моя. Добавила. Ты поуже. Добавила. Сам, сам, наверное. Поуже идет. Поуже было, Олег. Я поуже поехала? Че? Поуже, поуже да, это вот сюда отпустила. А, -а, -а. а я на восьми ставлю. Что ты? Водички хочешь? Окей. Excuse me, can I just get one more? Sorry, can I just get one more? Cheers. Hello, good evening and welcome to Dure Centre here in Perth for the City of Perth Ladies International brought to you by EDF Energy. We're ready for the start of the second draw and tonight's featured game is um, Eve Muirhead against Alina Biktimarova from Russia. My name's Peter Loudon. I'm joined this evening in the commentary Ma box by Mary Milne. Hi, ha Mary. Hi, Peter. How are you tonight? I'm very well, thanks. Looking forward to this game. We've just had the draw shot challenge. Just um, both teams had uh, a, a draw to closest to the button and Eve's stone, Eve going first, finishing the back of the forefoot. Unfortunately, the, the Russian skip um, was unable to better that. So Eve has hammer in the first end. And it looks like change of colours here, Mary. <laughs> that 
Um, right. With Eve having a hammer, the Russian team have chosen the red stones. Whether there's anything in that, we'll, we'll find out. We noticed with her uh, draw shot challenge, um, Biktimarova uh, was through the house, so she maybe thinks that uh, it's good luck to have the red stones. Perhaps, but uh, the thing was, she played a lovely practice yeah, draw shot. You know, she, she covered the pin. And mm -hmm. really only needed to do the same again, but unfortunately, as we all know, that's the most difficult shot in the book. Absolutely. Same again. Absolutely. So we're going to get us started this evening is Anastasia Skultan, the lead for Team Russia. Russian team are ranked fourth um, out of all the Russian teams. Um, and I'm speaking to them earlier on, they're looking forward to their Russian championships in May this year and using this very much as a practice event to get some top-class opposition um, and some decent games under their belt in advance of the Russian Championships in May. So. It's amazing how the game has changed, isn't it? We didn't have national championships in May. Usually, you know, they were always earlier in the season to let the teams get some time before the um, championships, but now it's all changed and the, the season lasts almost the full 12 months. You're right, the schedules are getting busier and there's conflicting events but f with that I suppose brings greater choice for the teams where, where they can go um, to play against the top class competition. So getting us underway as we say, School Tan, the Russian lead who's going to be trying to throw, I think she called it short, centre line trying to get a little bit of cover and develop something but that's looking a little bit heavy. It certainly is, you can not really need to work too hard on that one to get it out the back. Cool. It's. Um, I think the game earlier as well was the ice was pretty fast. So if they, ha I think the Russians were late arriving. Their flight had been delayed, so they've maybe not had the benefit of of watching the game earlier and seeing that things were a little bit quicker than they they perhaps expected. Y you're right. That's a good point. The Russians, a um, little bit delayed, were up at 3 a.m. flying from Moscow into Paris, and. Um, their flight delayed out of Moscow, hence they missed the connection from Paris into Scotland. So they've only been in Perth less than an hour, playing with some uh, borrowed brushes. I think they've all got their curling shoes. So yeah, a little bit of a rush, no ideal preparation for uh, this evening's game. I think it's important to note as well, there's a change in, in Eve's team this evening as well, Mary, isn't there? There is indeed. Poor Anna had a, a fall yesterday when she was out collecting her horse. Not that the horse had anything to do with it. I think she was... Uh, on her own two feet at that point and um, unfortunately she's twisted her knee um, at the moment we don't know how badly or uh, hopefully not too seriously the injury is but she's had some physio today and we'll see the doctor and have more physio tomorrow but unfortunately out for the competition so we've got a stand-in tonight of Chelsea Duncan Canadian from Yukon I believe and uh, she's slotting in at lead for the Muirhead team and the other girls have all moved up a place so Hopefully, that'll be a nice experience for her yeah, to get Yeah, great again. experience for her. So our first draw slipped into the house, and um, there was a nose hit in exchange of that. So Chelsea asked for the interim takeout by Eve, um, sweeping that straight away. Sarah Reid onto that one, trying to keep the line straight to make sure we get contact with the back red. And a nice shot Perfect. there from Chelsea. So. Uh, a decent start from Chelsea at, at the first end. So with the play being brought into the house, we'd expect an exchange of hits. Can't see at this point whether there'll be too many shots scored. I think the only way that would happen is if there's any errors from one team. So um, a reasonably straightforward end for us to start with. And nice for the girls to settle down. You know, gives them, especially maybe Chelsea and, and the others being out of position, it gives them the chance to kind of get the feel for, for what they're doing in the feel for the ice. Yeah. So. So hit and roll out there, which give Eve's, gives Eve the opportunity to put up a corner guard with having last stone. Corner guard's normally the, the shot of choice. A little bit of cover to the wings, leaving the four foot area open um, if, if need be, but also to try and develop something within the game. So Eve giving clear instructions to the sweepers on the line. Entirely up to the sweepers on judging the weight. We've got Chelsea sweeping next to the stone and we have Vicky Adams who's furthest away from the stone. Chelsea just bringing that to the spot that Eve wants it so Eve very much in charge of the line and the girls in charge of the weight. That one swung a fair Big bit. Big swing there, there wasn't yeah. there, yeah. I mean we played last night and the, the swing was was huge, you know you were taking edge of the eight to get over to the other side of the forefoot so I think they'll maybe take a couple of ends just to get, get a hold of that and obviously the, 
the weight dependent, that was quite a long guard. Perhaps if it had been a couple of feet more running on it, it would have stayed yeah. stayed more in the line that he was probably expecting. And I think with it being that long as well, Mary, even if the Russians were to choose to come round that, there's enough room for, for Eve to come past that and, and follow it down. Now, the, the, the call from the Russian skip here was a centre guard. Again, I think they're still just struggling a little bit to find the right speed. As you said, it was very, very fast, so they're maybe caught out a little bit here. Um, Katarina Antonova there um, with her first draw a little bit heavy through the house, which gives Eve the chance to play the come around of that guard that, that was just played. Yeah, well, this will give us a good indication of how much it's swinging and when she's playing a draw, you know, we'll see how much room we've got around that guard. But I think, I think plenty. I noticed that well that Eve had the brush on the other side of the centre line, so it's certainly moving a lot, which, which is great. Good ice conditions to to try and develop some exciting ends of curling for you this evening. Yeah, that's going to finish nicely, I think, behind the guard there. Nice weight as well. Great weight. In front of the T line is where you want to be, and a lovely shot there from Sarah Reed, who normally plays lead. lead. Yeah, yeah, moved up to yeah. second, so. I'm sure she'll be uh, relishing the opportunity to play a few more hits than she would normally play at lead. That's right. But maybe she'll be quite happy also to get the odd draw around the guard. Yeah, absolutely. The Russians, you know, when you've been out of sorts all day and, and perhaps thinking you're going to be late and you've got that panic, even, you know, the adrenaline and your, your own heart rate is still raised. And, and for these girls, they might just take a couple of, couple of ends before they can actually settle yeah. down and play you know the standard that they and probably it, like to be playing yeah and it's certainly affecting them i think to start with i think I in think terms so. of getting to grips with reading the ice speed mm -hmm. and swing you could see there i think the call was a barrier weight takeout from uh, nekrasova yana nekrasova there the, the third player she was maybe a little bit inside the brush and as a result it swung took the guard off gives eve's team with ricky adams who's playing third in this game the chance to draw to the other side of the house level with Sarah's draw and lie to Yeah, that'll put a bit of pressure on the, the Russians because, you know, that's Eve with last stone. This is an ideal situation for her getting a free draw to the other side of the house and, and they'll be quite happy now if they trade trade hits even. But this yeah. one's needing a bit of work. Looking quite good though, I think Mary the girls are working it. Eve coming out to give a hand there and well swept. Yeah, comfortably there. Yeah. Good position, good position. We'll see another hit, I think, again, yep. Yeah. Sarah giving a little bit of feedback to Vicky there on the, on the speed. So as we know at this level of curling, very important to understand the speed of the ice. The sweepers will time draws. They'll have a an agreed language and speed that they know. Um, so Sarah providing some vital feedback there to Vicky on the speed. Oh, that one overdrawing on them again. They're just bit. not maybe maybe a uh, the, ice, the ice they're used to playing on is perhaps not very swingy and this is just Possibly, yeah. a wee change for them so I'm sure they'll get there but yeah at the, at the moment they're just under icing a little bit maybe definitely Vicky gets the opportunity to split the house here so the shout of line's good plenty ice allowing it to draw to the open side Sarah and Chelsea sweeping that down I think again for weight, mm. Mary, I think they're going to have to work this all the way. It's still moving on. It's amazing how quick, you know, how far you can drag these stones, when, especially when it's as keen as it clearly yeah. is tonight. So that was, but that again, was very well swept yeah. there. Another excellent shot there from Vicky. So Chelsea playing, who's playing lead, Mary, over with one of the other Canadian teams. Is that correct this weekend? Do we that, know? Yeah, that's right. Now I'm just wanting to check which... Canadian team it is there. I think it is. Would it be right? Oh no, you know, I'm going to say the wrong one. I think it's Fleury, okay. but I could well be completely we can, wrong. Yeah, there, we, can, well. we can check up on that for you and, and, and confirm that later on. But great if she's come over as the fifth player to enable her to get a game. I'm sure she's delighted to, to play. Well, yeah, and you know, I don't know if this is their first trip over or if she's been, you know, she's been in Scotland before, but I would think, you know, much as we like to go and play in Canada, they probably very excited about coming to play here yes I'm sure they are I'm sure they are and she's getting to take control of the head while Eve's playing so that the, the regular sweepers sweeping combo of Sarah and Vicky get to to look after Eve Stones which is probably I think quite sensible I think that's a really, yeah, a really good decision then 
and lots of experience that the, the three girls in shot there many many years in experience and, and playing together over the last few years so I think that's uh, definitely a right decision so Eve again playing an intern draw wanting to end up fully in the 12 foot level with the stone that's um, her own yellow stone that's the other side of the house just now the girls are straight yeah, on this on early still moving still trundling along so they don't look as if they're panicking just yet but no i think the weight's pretty that's good that's it we're easing off vicky just making sure it gets in the house and we'll see they'll be happy with that i think alina trying to hit the shot that eve has just played and lie short to force eve to play a nose hit for two at the first end the important thing here for Alina is to make sure that she forces Eve to play the shot. As a skip, you've got to make this shot, roll in to lie shot. If the re end result's the same as our first one, it's a straightforward shot for Eve. Yeah, but I mean, there we saw the ice go down there, a brush just off the edge of the stone. It's not an awful lot of ice. So if she's not right out to that brush, then, you know, this could this could perhaps draw on her as well. But yep. they don't seem to be thinking that she was, she was inside at this one, so that's... So they're keeping it clean. And a nice That's shot a good there. Stone. Yep. So that'll lift our confidence. Last stone of the end moving into the second end. So what sort of weight do we think Eve's going to play for this one then, Mary? I would think that she'll probably be playing a, a sort of barrier to control. That's not a huge amount of ice, but it's you know, it's solid control. There we go. There we go. Eve right on the very money. kindly <laughs> told us what she was playing. <laughs> I think that's the thing if you're you know as long as you're out to the brush and with enough handle we know that that's super important as well to make sure you've got enough rotation on the stone yeah the solid weights won't move quite so much you know but um, so a bit of panic on this straight off i think this one's going to curl enough yeah. it's curling a long way oh that's coming right over onto Not the center make line any contact i don't think oh and a straightforward miss, so a steal of one in the first end for Team Russia, who will see that as a big bonus, and I'm sure we'll get a lift from that. Absolutely, that was completely against the run of play in that end, wasn't it, Pete? But I think Eve just maybe a little bit downweight. I don't think she threw the solid control that she was she was expecting. Possibly. When she said solid control, she had a little bit of ice off the edge of the stone, so either a little bit downweight or maybe just a, shea, a, a hair inside. Yeah. And in that part of the ice, now we can see it, it can curl even at, even at that weight. So, um, steal of one for, for Team Russia, moving into the second end. We'll see if we get some centre guards on now, and maybe, maybe a few more stones in play would be good to see. Anastasia here playing an intern draw. I think the call is to have it either just short of the house in the centre line. This one's maybe going to over curl a little bit. And it looks and very much like it's house. going to come into the house again, Pete. Yeah, it's maybe going to slip even behind the T line, I think. I think it is there. No, that's, that's quite an error, isn't it, when you're asked for a guard and you end up behind the T? Absolutely. I, I think they'd be looking to capitalise on that steal at the first end by throwing one shot and forcing the game a little bit. Um, they got one. St Eve still has last stone, so Eve now going to look to put on a corner gu guard, asking Chelsea for the outturn draw. Should have had a wee stopwatch between us to see if what this ice is running at. That was uh, a yeah. rookie error there for we can, uh, we can maybe the commentary re team. Remedy that for the, uh, for the end of our commentary this evening. It does look quick. Very quick. Good, nice shot. That's a nice shot. Yeah, a that's perfect, spot, yeah. isn't that's it? Better. That's a great spot. Chelsea looks quite relieved about it too. <laughs> so again, a centre guard being called by Alina Biktimarova, the Russian skip. These girls all from Moscow. Three of them, full-time curlers. Um, and I think you have an interesting factoid to tell us about, was it the, the skip? The skip. Alina, yes, and she was a professional dancer 
for 10 years before she took up curling, specialising in the cha-cha-cha, she tells me, Mary. <laughs> One of your favourites. One of my favourites, yes. <laughs> we'll have no uh, time for a cha-cha-cha this evening, uh, I'm afraid. No. But it just shows you again to tran transition from different um, sports or um, hobbies in, into curling. I'm yeah. sure there's many stories of people doing different sports before I they I think do the it. Russians in, in particular have, yeah. have really gone down that that route. They've taken oh athletes from, from different sports and, and moved them over to yeah. curling. And if we notice here, Mary, we're asking um, Chelsea looking for an interim hit and they held that well. But if you look at the line that that was down, it wasn't too far away from where Eve missed with her last stone at the last end. So it's certainly curling. So I think the message to the skips out there across all the games this evening is give plenty of ice both on your draws and on your hits. Absolutely. You mentioned plenty of rotation on the stones to make sure it doesn't over curl. If you're going to be soft in the handle when you release it, that will certainly catch the curl and miss it. Yeah, that's a nice rotation there from... Um, it, oh no. Ekaterina? Ekaterina, that's it. Yeah. So Ekaterina actually played here. She played here in the World Juniors, 2011. Gosh. Got a bronze medal with the Russian girls. Nice, she looks and I think the skip, I think if my memory serves me right, would be um, Anna Sidorova, I think was skip, who's gone on to be um, top, play, top player in the ladies' I game. I think you're right. I think, so it I think it Eve, that Eve won gold that year, didn't she? Or did she beat Sidorova in the final, maybe? Okay. No, not if, not if the Russian got bronze. Well, she said bronze to me, but she may be confused. I think I think she beat Sidorova <laughs> in the final. I think you know better. You'll need to go and Google that <laughs> we'll one. We'll need to Google <laughs> that one. So an out turn draw here. This is looking a bit, Sarah. a bit steamy, maybe. Line's looking not too bad. It's going to slip behind the T-line. Needs to sit down it pretty does. quickly. But that's lying okay. second shot. Yeah, and the, and the Russian... Uh, first stone is, is open so and that she's electing to take this one out probably seeing about half to three quarters from the hack asking for a little bit more ice there a Katarina asked for an interim take out of the yellow stone that's lying in the back of the 12 foot some might say this is a little bit of a negative shot with everything behind the tee line lying one another alternative might have been to just draw down, follow that down and tap that back. Yeah, I think so, but, you know, we saw in the first end that they've, they struggled a little bit with their draw weight, so maybe she was happier, thinking even if we half it out, they've still got the two counters, it's still a good possibility to force Eve sure. maybe into taking a one, so Eve's chasing around this, uh, this guard again, which as we said, was ideally located for her, so Sarah's got another chance to try and put one the right side of the tee this time. Sure. And a couple of options for here um, here for Eve. She's chosen the out turn draw around the corner guard. Another option, I think, Mary, might be to play the in turn draw and freeze one of the reds on the other side of the house. This is looking a little bit heavy again. Yeah, that's unusual, you would say. First, well, it's a little bit, um, yeah, a foot lighter maybe than our first one. But probably that second shot, red still lying one. difficult to tell when the stones are so far separated isn't it you know and to, they certainly don't see as much of it behind the guard this time so they're either going to have to play a quieter weight to come down maybe back round or they're going to have to come round the other side but oh, definitely she's not seen very much of that at all just a corner Oops. I think yep out turn draw was the call there no she's, not, she's oh. choosing to try and play the same shot and just pick this one out yeah I'm not I'm not sure I would be playing this shot I think yeah, it's um, it's a tough it's a tough one. Again, you've got to go with what you think your player's gonna gonna make and uh, good clean release. She obviously thinks that Jana's got more chance here with the, with the slightly guard. stronger weight. Oh, she nearly hit the nose of that guard, so mm. a little bit either tight or curled too much enough. They didn't so seem to to jump on the sweeping, or you know, maybe oh. she was. No panic was or really on that. Maybe we missed, missed our call really and she wanted to come off that front one and maybe just caught the wrong side of it. I don't know. But anyway, gives Eve the chance now to, to freeze one onto that short stone. It does and that shows you the, the, the advantage of, of the, um, the red stones slipping behind the tee line. That gives Team Muirhead the advantage to use them to rest up against, freeze, make it more difficult for Team Russia to remove them. 
Line's crucial here as much as weight is. There seems to be... Um, is this going to curl enough to rest on this? That it's certainly it going a long way, you know. It's and the wee nudge just to make sure that they're now lying two. two. Yeah, that's, that's a good shot. I think so, we'll be happy with that. And again, sets them up quite nicely in a good position to score two. And that's what Eve will be looking to do this in Maris, you know. She'll be looking to capitalise on the mistake from the Russians, score two. If she gets a chance to score any more than that, it's a bonus. Absolutely. So an out turn hit here is called. What you need to be careful of is that you're not jamming it on the back red one. Well, that's, that's the, the danger, isn't it? Yeah. The, the call is to hit it on the nose, roll over to lie one. There's probably enough separation between the, the stone that they were freezing there to, that she won't jam on the outside one, but sure. we'll just have to see how this is going to come down. Oh, that's, ah, nice shot. Oh, that's a looking good. And a nice roll over. Yeah. To lie shot beside the yellow one. Eve's got the chance to hit and roll away again, but you know the mere fact that the two are so close together, the Russians will be quite pleased that they forced Eve over into playing in the same kind of area that her own stone is in. So, so the call here, intern draw, eh, sorry, intern take out to hit that red one and move towards the other red. Just a kind of easy weight, I would say. She's not going to, that's not, on ice this keen, you're not needing to throw bullets down the ice. Are you? you can I play something that's, that's a little bit more controllable with your sweepers. I agree. But we would have probably wanted a little bit more movement on that one. And you would have expected that maybe from the hog line in to move a little bit more. Traditionally, mm. that's what happens on, on that part of the ice. Um, in Perth, you'll find that sometimes the stones will run a little bit straighter and then, and then swing towards the end. So it's not an easy double, though. I mean, they're, they're quite close together. Um, playing an out turn, obviously left, left hander. Alina's the left hander playing out of the, um, the other hack. So she'll be looking to catch a little bit of the first yellow and remove both yellow stones to lie. If she lies, she lies three. Yeah, if not, and that puts the two. pressure right back on, onto Eve again and, 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 and makes it look more yeah, like sorry, a four jumped sorry on, pizza. Jumped on the sweeping there a little bit, which tells us she's a little bit tight, but... Yeah, yeah just the one. Hit. So that's a, a break, you would say, for Team Muirhead here, because they didn't even roll in front of that stone. So mm. Eve's got a, a straight forward, shall we say, take out here to, to lie two. And again, a nose hit, I don't think, is a disaster here, Mary. She'll be looking to hit and roll again towards the red stones, try and square up the yellows yeah. to lie to. She certainly doesn't want to catch it too thin on the inside there, or she's going to jam it on her. You know, she'll, yeah. she won't maybe jam, but she would certainly run the risk of, of nicking her own yellow out. So mm. although she'll want a roll, she won't want to be too crazy with the, with the roll, I don't think. So this one needing to curl a little bit, hence the shout of Vicky to try and make it curl with her sweeping. And it's looking like the nose. The nose. Not, not a big disaster. So two options here for Alina. She could either play the double, which I think she's called, or she could elect to take out the yellow stone that Eve has just played and check over in front of Eve's second shot yellow to make yeah. it more difficult for Eve to remove the red past the yellow to score two. I think she indicated though to. I think the she's going for the double peak. Yeah, okay. she's. Uh, I suppose if she'd been lying second shot, then the hit and roll is perfect. But yeah. because she's maybe thinking if I could put a little bit more pressure on Eve by making a play against the two or a three, rather than just against the one, because we, you know, if she's going to perhaps have the whole of the eight foot to draw to. You wouldn't expect um, Eve to miss that, so she's trying to force the issue by taking the double. Again, right on the sweeping. Close, I think. Certainly going to be on the right side. Ooh. Ooh. Well. In fact, they overswept that, Mary. Because she was playing an out turn, and it was needing to curl more, wasn't it? Was it um, she was coming. <laughs> no, I don't even think what we... Yeah, she was needing to... With her leftiness. Anyway, Eve's got a hit for two. 
knows she how has. it does happen. We're still trying to figure out <laughs> left and right and turn and out turn. Easy, I think we're but meant to call it clockwise and anti-clockwise now, Pete. Oh, sorry. So that's, you know, that's probably where we've confused ourselves. We've but gone you've got to remember, I'm old school. Totally old school. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we've come down to Eve. Take out. Take out. Nose hit for two at the second end. Yeah, and she's going to want to make sure that she makes this on the back of the I seem reasonably the confident end. with the line. And a nice shot. Yeah, that's a good shot. That'll steady the nerves. So two for Team Muirhead at the second end. So score being 2-1 to Team Eve Muirhead. We're delighted to be able to bring this Curling Champions Tour game to you from City of Perth. Thanks to our title sponsors, EDF Energy, in conjunction with British Curling. Le Gruyere, Switzerland, Perth and Kinross Council, Mercure Hotels, and our hosts, Live Active Leisure. We're here at Dure Centre in Perth all weekend. First draw was at four o'clock this afternoon. We are currently two ends into the second draw. And as you see, our featured game is Team Eve Muirhead against Team Victor Marova from Russia. We must have one of the least travelled teams playing against the farthest travelled teams. So won't be, although Eve and Co are just back from Swift Current in Canada where they were yeah. playing in the the World Championships. But you're so right, this is Eve's home local, local ice rink and you're right, playing against one of the furthest travelled teams and we have a number of teams that have travelled travelled a lot tight. of miles to be with us this Oops. week. We have Just Vicky. Team Just Ogasawara who are in the same section as these two teams all the way from Japan. That's one another one that you'll be able to Japanese. do well with the, the yeah. pronunciation another of the another surname. Another, <laughs> another challenge for me <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> commentating on, on them but always a pleasant challenge. Um, we have three teams from Canada. We have teams from Norway, Sweden, Germany, Switzerland, and England as well as Scotland. So a great turnout of international teams for the very first event here on the uh, City of Perth Ladies International. It's a, you know, it's a fabulous field and it's a fabulous event for Perth to be hosting. We've, you know, as you yourself have played in the Masters, which is held here in January of the of the year, and uh, the ladies have long um, thought that we were hard done to mm. not getting an international um, event and this is hey, this no is certainly a, a great standard of event for, for Perth to be putting on, so I'm sure Eve will enjoy being able to play at home in this kind of field and, yeah. and relish the chance. And I think it's fair to say even the girls have been instrumental in bringing a lot of these teams over over here. I think they've been keen to have this level of competition in Scotland. We pulled it off this year. It's testament to uh, to Bill Duncan, David Hay and, the or and all, the every, all the other volunteers on the organising committee. As you say, if it can last as long as the Perth Masters, it'll be a great thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's been going now yeah. for a number of years and it's right up there as one of the, the top events in, in Europe, if not the world. So to attract this amount of top quality teams in, in the first year's um, a great, great kudos for everybody involved and um, as we said, thanks to, to all the sponsors that have been involved in making this happen. So back to the curling then, Mary. Yes, we've yes we better few pay few attention. A sto few stones in, we're still at Leeds Stones. At the moment, Eve's got a couple of yellows in the house. Yeah, but we're, we've been asked for a guard here, so um, a bit, bit tremolo is uh, calling an aggressive event here. Yeah, I know, not at all. <laughs> I'm going to let you do the <laughs> the names and I'm just going to shotgun here along beside but you're right. you. But Corner yeah. guards, the right shot. Um, and Eve, I think now, lying one top of the forefoot, an aggressive call, she'll call a guard, just short of the house, in line with that yellow stone that you see in the red circle. Out turn, guard for Sarah Reid. It's fair to say as well, Mary, that Eve's team, I think, they've definitely got a better grip on draw weight than Team Russia, especially the first end. Yeah, Just I think that one slip up from Eve. I think their weight control has been has been excellent the first couple of ends, partly down to the, the sweepers and the communication as well. In yeah. terms of some of the stats, I think we've got some of the stats after a um, couple of ends across the, across we the team. We've certainly got the first end. We're still uh, waiting the second end, but, you know, in the first end it was... Definitely um, a good start by the the Scottish team with the Canadian helper. Um, Chelsea played 75%, Sarah 75%, Vicky had a, 
a fantastic first end at 100% and Eve with the the final miss she uh, she had a slightly lower end but the the Russians had a 75 for Anastasia Ekaterina was 63 Jana was 63 and Alina um, played 100% of her shots but we will see how those stats develop as the as the game goes on nice double takeout there from second player Ekaterina Antonova in the second end she seems pleased with that one yeah. and she's had a reasonably solid start I would say from from uh, I think the she Russian has team. yeah she's I think she's been, been yep yeah, yep yeah. she's made uh, made the vast majority of her shots and that certainly is a, a useful one and rolled over but I don't think she got buried behind the guard so. yeah, an out turn take out for Sarah like he's sweeping hard knows how good shot so, and that blocks off the the line behind that corner guard now for for the Russian team so they're going to have to do something either come around the yellow that's biting the rings or maybe slip in between the two of them but they're they've opted for the hit and roll and she definitely seems to be taking a little bit more ice. She is, yeah. I think this is a sensible call. That yellow stone's in the, that control zone at the front of the house, which can be used to Eve's advantage. So for um, for Team Russia to remove that, they're looking to then roll the red stone across in front of the other yellow one, possibly to count into the house as well. And that's a nice shot, well executed. Ooh, she doesn't look overly pleased about something. Oh, I'm not sure whether she agreed with the sweeping or not, but I think that's a pretty good result. I think so. You know, obviously, she's got it over in the direction of, of Eve's yellow stone there, and although Vicky's going to have to take away the red stone, there is a chance if she catches it slightly on the wrong side that they could jam or, or run off yeah. the back stone. So that's what uh, Team Russia will be looking for. This is pretty close if there's... Definitely. Ah, nice shot. A good story. Nice shot. Looks like Russia are going to chase that one again and play the hit and roll back over towards the, the corner guard. Yeah, looking to hit and roll, as you say, um, again taking plenty ice. Out on takeout, looking to remove the yellow stone and roll in behind our own red corner guard. Slightly po more positive Whoa! weight, maybe they're playing than they, yeah. they sort of started off with. But they're having to work this one. This one's curling. Oh, oh. Overswept a little bit. Yeah. yeah, and that's ruled out. Perhaps, you know, the communication you were talking about earlier that's so important, you know, maybe the skip thought she was getting a lighter weighted stone coming towards her and the, and the sweepers didn't manage to communicate that it was maybe a little bit up or, you know, you would think it had to be something like that when she was sweeping it, thinking that she was going to get more movement. I think that's vital, Mary. In, in any sport, I think everyone in the team has to be clear what their role is in the team in terms of communication and execution of their shots, and that can be the difference between winning and losing. And as we know, in curling, being a game of very, very fine margins, you have to have your communication spot on. A lot of these teams practice on that when they're training, away from competition time just to yeah. fine-tune that communication side of things. Slight difference for Eva's having um, Chelsea in the team this evening. A uh, little bit of a different dynamic there from a communication point of view, but I, I think she's slotted in very well. Well, she seems to be playing, you know, she's playing nicely, uh, and she looks to be putting a lot of effort into her sweeping, so they can't ask for any more than that, and hopefully they won't ask for any more than that of their old sub tomorrow. Yes, that's yourself. I believe it's an early night for you, straight from the commentary box to bed. Absolutely. Starting for Team Muirhead tomorrow. Three games, is that correct? Three games, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying not to think of that. We'll just play it one shot at a time. Right. That's what the that's what you meant to do, isn't it? Ooh, that's oh, that was very close to the guard, but a nice shot. So there'd been a lovely draw there from a lovely draw from Vicky and a really, really tight um, past the guard takeout. Would good result. Eve was out there ready to sweep the guard, was it? As I it moved over, so, yeah. wasn't she? Catch it. It really was tight to the guard, but. So again, what she'll be looking stone. to do is remove this red one. I know it's hit again. I don't think it's a bad result here. Even though she'll be looking to force either force Russia to take one, so the game's tied up with her having hammer going into the fourth end, or if possible, maybe force an error and get a steal of one to get a, a two shot jump. So. First and foremost, in turn take out and looking to hit on the nose. Yep. Oh, 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 
so maybe not quite as much of a a draw as she expected, but that seems to be that was a good yeah. stone. I think from um, Alina's point of view here, I wouldn't see there's that much advantage to be gained by hitting that top one unless she's wanting to play the double. I think a better shot if she's wanting to score two is maybe to hit the shot that's lying in the white circle and roll over, and roll over behind the yellow one. Yeah, I'd yeah. You know, she hits and rolls off the top one. Eve can still throw another one in the high and probably would just draw to lie two. Yeah. Or alternatively, draw round. Yeah. I mean, there's still a lot of space. There's nothing in the four foot circle. So if she was to play a draw round, although she's electing mm. to, to hit this very, very, very thin double, um, she just have to catch a fraction of that front yellow to remove both yellows. But I think she's looking to hit and roll in front of that. Yeah, I think this is this is a it's not a call that's going to get her a two. No. You would you know unless Eve makes a a big mistake. Um, this is a, a yeah, it's a strange one. Yeah, I think I think her thinking here, Mary, is if she hits and rolls in front of that yellow one, it'll be difficult for Eve to remove it and lie in the house to lie to. So she's maybe thinking to blank this end, you know. If she hits and rolls, Eve hits and rolls out, then she can blank, then she can blank the end. Yeah, but you yeah. you know, I think oh, now she's got a So I think Eve's got a choice. Time. Well, Eve's got a choice here. Does she draw to lie to? Or does she remove that red one? It's only biting the front circle. Oh, I think the I aggressive shot is the draw. Yeah, I think all day long. You know, I think at this stage we're in the third end. Even worst case scenario, you know, the Russian score, I don't think that's a disaster for Eve. I would have liked to have seen a draw here, Absolutely. force the issue a little bit and perhaps get a steal. Yeah, but as you know, it's a confidence thing as well. As a skip, it's, it's that in the moment. If Eve was really, really confident with the ice and draw weight, I think you'd find her playing the draw shot. Mm -hmm. But she's maybe not 100% into the groove yet, so she's going to try and hit and roll over, still lie two, and then... There's a choice for Team Russia. Do they play the takeout or do they draw for one? Yeah, as long as she gets the roll into the house here, she's forcing. Exactly. And, you know, maybe their, you know, their plan might be that they take twos and force ones. That's, you know, and a yes, perfectly good... Uh, curling quite a lot. I think she keeps swing. Well, that's, that's right. right. Yeah, well, that's well executed. So, I think you, you would find... She can see all of that yellow one. Or the other alternative is draw to the forefoot. I think that's the sensible, sensible shot. You've got. Well, a fair if bit you were going to draw with your last stone, though, would you not have thrown a draw with your first one? You, you, you know, I think that, yeah. she threw the, she threw the hit with her first one, where she could have drawn at that point to come round, and I think this is, again, this is a kind of strange call, and I think that this, even taking this handle, is a strange. Do you think Call. so? I think she's got enough room on that, that turn. I think she should be okay. You know, with a big swing, do we know how much it's going? If she'd taken the other hand, she was always drawing away from Eve Stones and she had a lot of room. I think this is... Uh, I will find out she she's got plenty of room and a good positive rotation. Yeah, I, th yeah, I, don't think I don't think there's any danger of it over-curling here. I think it's down the way. And the, the Wait, sweepers looks are good. The yeah. sweepers aren't worried. Yeah, she looks pretty good. Or is she going to be a fraction heavy? That looks to be... That's heavy, I think. Just slipped a Just little bit too far. So that's one, so giving up the one. one to the yellow. So a good steal for Team Muirhead there. It did yeah. draw quite a long way, though. Mm, you know, did. even with that back, yeah. back eight weight. So I think if she'd been needing her sweepers to be working that one, you know, it might have been a different a different matter with the sweeping. But there we go. So 3-1 after three ends for Team Muirhead as we move to the... Halfway point, the fourth end in this game in the second draw here at Dewar Centre. And we have our, our stats, stats here. Um, Chelsea's having a, a very solid game. She's playing away at 79%, so I don't think there's any problems there. Sarah, I think maybe just with her couple of heavy draws, has um, she's down at 63, so I'm pretty sure she'll be wanting to, to pick that up in the, the second part of the game. Yep. Vicky's having a great game at third. Anna might be a little bit nervous sitting watching this one because <laughs> she's playing at 96 percent and eve has has uh, come up to 83 so that's a that's a pretty solid yeah. performance there from team your head and to be fair there's not an awful lot in it as we've seen in this game 
Anastasia, the Russian lead, is at 75. Ekaterina is at 75. Yana down at 63. Maybe just a couple of misses for her. And uh, Alina's playing at uh, 75. So there's not an awful lot in it, but as the score shows, the, the Scottish team just have the edge, I think. I agree. Def at definitely. the moment. And on the subject of Anna, speaking to her earlier on, she was saying she'd been um, to see about her knee today. They'd had a quick look at it saying they didn't think there was anything too serious. It was a little bit swollen, but she has an appointment with the doctor um, at the Scottish Institute of Sport tomorrow, yeah. tomorrow, hopefully to get a proper diagnosis, and then, um, if need be, they would, they would send her for a scan. So our best wishes go with her. We hope it's a, a speedy recovery back on the rink. Um, we certainly do. I think um, they were fairly confident that the this, although there was a little bit of swelling, it wasn't too big. So they're thinking that maybe it's not ligaments, it might be a muscular thing and, and that can obviously, that will fix an awful lot quicker than if it, if it did sure. end up being ligaments. So okay. Time will tell there, but the, the good people at the Institute will look after her very well, I'm sure. Absolutely. And a little mistake there from Russian lead Anastasia. She was looking to play the corner guard again to try and develop something at this end and she slipped into the house, so straightforward takeout for Chelsea Duncan on the in turn. That looks like super, a nice throw super there. Super sub for yeah. Team Muirhead today. See, so having to do a little bit of work, but I don't think it's... Uh, yeah, it's a nice shot. And a good roll. A nice roll behind. Again, I think they'll see the... Yep. Uh, Alina looking again for a, a corner guard on the other side. These two yellows are in good position for Eve just now, so I think even when the corner guard comes down, the chances are she may ignore that I think and then so. put a little bit of cover up in front of these yellows. Yeah, and um, if there has been a, you know, a where the errors have come for the, the Russian team, I think it's just been that they have slipped in a little bit heavier with their guards than, you know, they've, they've not been getting the guards on. They've been coming into the house, which of course has then changed the whole game plan. Yeah, absolutely, and with the free guard zone, it just shows you how influential the leads can be in terms of determining how the, the end pans out. As you say, if they don't get them short, and again here, it's, it's slipping into down. the house, it means it's much more straightforward for Team Muir, uh, Muirhead in terms of the types of shots that they're playing. Yeah, it's so difficult, you know, uh, uh, for the skips, when they have an idea of what they want in the end to build, and then uh, they're just not. She's just not getting a chance to to create the opportunities that she's looking to to make because um, these guards are just coming in a little bit too deep. But Definitely. There's time yet. It's only three one, so we'll just have to wait and see how it uh, how it pans out. But at the moment, this end is looking very nice for yep. for Team Scotland. So rather than throw the guard this time, Alina calling a takeout. She's looking to remove the yellow stone. Changed her mind now, looking to remove the front yellow stone. I think she was looking to remove that one no, and lie in front of it. So, Katerina asking for change of ice. She's been quite, um, she's obviously been paying attention to how much it's drawing because that's mm. the, at least the second time she's asked for a little bit more ice. Yep. Whoa. Whoa. As we said earlier, the team. Big Timarova, fourth ranked in Russia. Oh. Thought she was aiming for the front one. Yeah, there, I don't think that was the necessarily the shot she was going no. for, but um, and obviously moving the one that was slightly nearer the forefoot has uh, will have benefited her, but she's not really got an awful lot out of that. The, mm. the forefoot's still covered. Eve's still got the chance to come round, so actually moving one of the short front stones and, and lying about would certainly have been her preference at that point. And the key was lying about, as you said. She needs to have her own stone lying there to try and create something if Eve had chosen not to remove it with her next one. So as we talked about, um, this will be the final event for Eve for the season. Can that be correct, is it? Or has she got anything I've else left? I thought they were going to the players. Are they going is to the players? Is there a players' championship, championship still? I think. So uh, maybe one more after this. I'm just yeah. trying to, um, I suppose, make the point that the, the Russians you mentioned earlier national finals in May after this event they're going back they've got a number of competitions in uh, in Moscow over the next few weeks they were saying then they have a 10 team national championships round robin and on to semi-final playoffs to find the Russian ladies champion 
for 2016. Well, that's a healthy number of entries for their national championship. That's De uh, definitely, yeah. and, and I think nothing better preparation-wise than, than a competition here and playing against a team of uh, the standard of, of Team Muirhead in the, in the opening game. So they'll be looking to put in a good performance this weekend. That was a hit and roll, looking for a double takeout, just missed. So Eve asking for, s uh, I was going to say Vicky. Sarah, <laughs> we've gone a little bit, Vicky, <laughs> in, in turn takeout to, to lie three. You say Vicky's having a great game up to this point. Do the commentators cuff? Well Hopefully not. It. But, but no, this no, looks okay. There she again. goes and right back over to the Keeps towards that the centre yeah, line. level of consistency up, well executed shot. Good stones. The girls, I think, um, would be disappointed with their with the results in, in Canada and Swift Current at the World Championships. I think, as always, they would go hoping to be on the podium, if not at the top of the podium. And yeah. the, the last couple of games just kind of um, got away from them a wee bit and, and they ended up in fifth place and just out, of the, just out of the playoffs, which would be disappointing, but still very valuable Olympic points that they've yeah. collected for Great Britain and Agreed. yet more experience for, for these young ladies who have played for what seems like an awful lot of years now, even though they're all still... Absolutely. You're, you're right. I've not had a, a chance to have a, a proper chat with them because they've only recently returned, as you said, to the country. But, yeah, they put themselves in a great, a great position after losing the first game to Sweden to win yep. seven in yep. a row. Unfortunately, we're on the, the wrong side for the last three games and just missed out on the playoffs. So. I don't yeah. think there would be many times when, you know, in a... You know, when you've got 11 games at a 7 and 4, wouldn't at least have got, you know, get you a playoff. Okay. I think it was unfortunate yeah. that, you know, the way the, 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 the games went, that, that they were just that one game, one game shy of a playoff position. But I watched some of the games and um, the, the Japanese and the Swiss team both seemed to be outstanding. So mm -hmm. I think uh, Dave the other night, you know, admitted or, or agreed that really on the day they were the best teams to be in, in the final, final and yeah. it was it was a super game which is uh, great for Curly. Absolutely and you do tend to find that don't you that the, those teams that in a particular week have an outstanding week. A nice little shot there again important was the important thing there was for Jana that she did remain in the house with that takeout although relatively straightforward remove the red Eve will maybe be looking to roll over and guard that shot that's at the back of the one foot on the centre line. Well, it seems that the nose is pretty good as well, Pete. Well, she said even the nose is pretty good. <laughs> I think ideally she would want the role Mary, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I yeah. think so. I think you're right, because the one that's sitting in the forefoot there is, it was just behind the tee, I think, so yeah. we'd give um, Alina the chance to, to freeze up to it, so we'll see what happens with this one. A wee sweep from Sarah required, so... So it's going to be rolling. That's a nice. That's a super shot. shot. Yeah, that's good. But it gives Alina a chance of a double, double and roll. Or if she was wanting to be really, really aggressive and in turn freeze onto the shot with this ice swinging as much as it is, Mary. I think that was something that she could, could have considered. Yeah, although I guess she's not. Maybe if it no. was a foot, you know, if it yeah. was a foot further, shorter, just biting the eight foot. I think you would maybe go for that. But it's a pretty, it's I a agree pretty that tight, angle. isn't it? She yeah. can't really see any of that back one. I think as uh, Alina prepares to play this, it's important to say as well, it's been a great year for the Muirheads, hasn't it? Oh, it Goings has, out in yeah. Basel just now. Getting warmed up and ready to start Team tomorrow. Team Brewster in the, the World Men's Championships. And then, of course, dad of them all, Gordon, yeah. going out to the World Senior Championships in a couple of weeks from now. I think that's the second half of April. So, very successful year on the ice for the Muirheads. Yeah. So, Alina calling woe to this one, looking to curl a little bit. And a lovely yeah, and shot there. Yeah, that's a super stone. Yeah, that's a great result. So, removed both yellows and rolled a little bit further behind that yellow at the front of the house. So Eve got a pretty similar shot than she's just played. It's maybe a little bit further over, but she'll be looking to play probably the exact same shot to try and hit and roll to the top of the forefoot. Yeah, I suppose the slight danger here is if she catches it a little bit too thick um, and almost gets to the nose, it might get that jam on the back one. But, to be careful, yeah. Yeah. but she would then be lying, and the double swing. wouldn't be easy to then try and no, try and score. Right. Off. So we'll have to see how this one is. But I think 
you're right, I think she'll want to roll back towards the centre line. Sarah's straight onto that one, so Eve's obviously thinking this it's going to move. This one's coming on, I think. Sarah's holding it. Yeah, that was the... There we go, but that's okay. They've... Uh, yeah. It did draw a little more than... But I think you're right looking at that angle, angle even if she'd jammed it. It was impossible to take the double takeout. And, well, you could have had the double takeout in blank, I suppose. That would have been uh, yeah. maybe the call. So anyway, straightforward draw. Called for Alina Victimarova. Her last draw, she, she was a little bit deep and went just back of the eight foot, didn't she, to give up the one. So yes. it'll be interesting to see if she can make the adjustment here and, and get to the, the four foot. But full eight foot would, would do her in this case, wouldn't it? So last stone here at the fourth end. Full eight foot to score one. Well, it doesn't look light out of the hand, I wouldn't say. It didn't. Plenty rotation, the sweepers are standing back yeah, that's, that's not what you want to see when you've just let go and the I sweepers not looking near it the body language tells its own story that this one is trying to sit down a little bit Eve yeah. working hard, if she gets that right through she'll steal two yeah. and in fact that's what's happened So a steal of two for team Muirhead so at the halfway stage here the score is 5-1 for Team Muirhead against Team Victimarova from Russia. It's a, a comfortable lead. I think the girls will be quite quite happy with that. Team percentages at a halfway stage, Mari? Yeah, we've like? got um, 79 for, for Eve, Eve's team as a team stat and against 72. So, you know, the stats... They only tell half the story, don't they? You know, that looks like it's a pretty tight game. And in most respects, it actually is a very tight game. Mm. But we've seen just crucial errors at the wrong time, exactly. which have which have led to this 5-1 score. Mm. You know, it's hard to believe that the Russians s stole in the first end and then haven't been able to put anything else together mm. to, to create an end after that. Maybe some guards coming in a bit deep mm. and uh, a couple of crucial misses maybe by the skip. But... Uh, but you're right, I think starts do only tell part of the story. At the end of the day, as, as a skip, you can play 50%, but if you only you play the right 50%, you'll win, you'll win all your games. Yeah. So I think it's more important to be in the moment and concentrate on what's in front of you one, one shot at a time. So a good start here. I'll tell you what, Chelsea's definitely playing very well here. Got good control of the weight and line to start off there. She does, and I'm, I'm sure that... Um Eve will be quite delighted with, you know, when you haven't even had a chance to, to spend any time together, never mind practice together, you know, I think it's yeah. it's it's great that she's come on and played so well for them and nope. seems to be fitting in and enjoying it. It's hard to believe that she's going to be replaced for tomorrow's games. <laughs> it's hard to no believe. No, no pressure <laughs> on whoever's coming in, but she's got a lot to live up to. Yeah, that's, uh, thanks <laughs> for that. <laughs> that doesn't give me any more sleepless nights than, than I'll need to have, I think. But we'll see how it goes. You can only do your best. Okay. So we've got a better, um, well, it's a guard, but perhaps actually a little bit too short this time. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it was time that the um, Anastasia made a, yeah. an adjustment, so she was better being a little bit too light there rather than, as she has been in the last couple of ends, just slipping into the house. So Definitely. Let's them maybe make a make a play on you know creating an end so we'll see how that pans out important to note as well you mentioned you were speaking to Dave earlier on that's Dave Dave Hay coach to Eve Muirhead um, team Big to Marova uh, don't have a coach with them here this weekend most teams do have coaches with them so it may be that their coach um, Olga Andrianova who we know has um, been heavily involved in a lot of Russian teams over the years, is maybe watching this game online, taking some notes. Yeah. And we'll be doing yeah. so over the weekend. I think that's the beauty of having the webcast that if the coaches are unable to travel and their teams are featuring in any of the games, gives them the opportunity to watch, see what's going well, see Absolutely. what's going not so yeah. well, and yeah. then use that to uh, feedback when they get back to, to Russia. You know, and even with the texting or Skyping, there could perhaps be a, 
a phone call later on and they can discuss the game or they can, you know, they can certainly message and, yeah. and see where they think they maybe went wrong or maybe think that they could make improvements in different aspects of the game. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a great facility as well as the TV coverage to have the online coverage mm. for, for those not in Scotland yeah. and able to watch BBC Alba. But I think speaking to the girls earlier, not ideal preparation. They were feeling a little bit tired, as you I think I mentioned earlier they were up at 3 o'clock this morning. It was always going to be a little bit tight. majority of the teams would have flown into Scotland yesterday. A number of them came in earlier in the week, depending on where they were flying in from and uh, if they'd been at World Championships uh, prior to um, this weekend. But the Russians chose to travel today and it didn't quite work out for them and it's not quite working out for them on the ice to to this point. Did you say earlier that three of the players are um, professional athletes? Curlers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all, all bar the lead uh, are full-time curlers. They have a, they have a, um, a curling program in Russia that's, uh, that's well-funded and a number of athletes who are full-time curlers. Which makes the decision to travel today even stranger. Yeah. You know, um, you would think it is not ideal preparation getting up at 3 a.m. when you have to curl at 8 p.m. No. So perhaps uh, we'll see if that takes a toll over the weekend because they'll be back on the ice early tomorrow you aren't they? Just the yeah. first game's tomorrow at 9am 9am in this section I know that Eve has three games tomorrow but m- perhaps the Russians have one of their buys but they do I think they don't play till 2 o'clock tomorrow so, they so can, they can yeah three games time. tomorrow we'll be bringing you some more live games 9 o'clock 2 o'clock 7 o'clock featuring a number of um, different teams here, mainly Scottish teams I think tomorrow morning we've got an all Scottish affair we've got Hannah Fleming against Sophie Jackson for you tomorrow morning at at 9am so make sure you tune in for that whether you're at work or not yeah absolutely that's the again the beauty of the online presence absolutely, Okay, so back to the curling again a similar pattern to this end Eve and her front end making their shots, setting it up nicely. The Russian team not getting the cover on that they would normally desire to get something going. Forced now to some play some takeouts in the house and try to roll and get a little bit of cover. Nice oh, double takeout there, but still relatively straightforward for Eve. There's, there's not much cover here um, being used by the Russian team to their advantage. Yeah, I think in that case, pos- possibly just taking one stone, but making sure of the roll was the better option. Always tempting to try and take both stones out when you see them there, but, you know, I think thinking a few stones ahead that uh, it might have been better to get behind that corner guard. And I think even just ignoring them and playing a draw, Mary, was another well, option. Yeah. You're, fi- you're 5-1 down, you've got to get something going. It's kind of yeah. desperation stakes to a certain extent here. Yeah. You want to be scoring two at this end. There's only four ends left. You're four shots down. You've got to try and develop something. An eight end game, you know, it can it can be over very, very quickly. Yeah. You know, you get a few shots down and and you think you definitely do feel the, the pressure when you run out of ends and as you say. So draw this time though. So that yellow first shot's at the top of the house. They're calling the guard with the yellow, so Yana being asked to play an outcome draw. Try and get behind a little bit of the cover there. The way it looks this is reasonably good. Big draw, though. It's already pulling quite a lot. Whether it got a wee start, I'm not too sure. No, but they're, they're happy with the line, though. They need to carry on. That's a, a nice shot. Do you think that rubbed the guard there, Pete? Or do you oh, think I think we just got past it. Just and got they'll, by. They'll, they'll be pleased with that one. Although... Yeah, that's a good stone. But they're going to lose, you know, the cover that they did have. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the plan for, for Eve. The, the run back being called for here. And normally as a second player, Vicky would be asked to play these on a regular basis. So yeah. um, something that she will have in her locker. Sarah sweeping very hard, trying to hit her own yellow stone in the nose and remove the red one. Just over curled a little bit. Probably the, the preference though, if they were going to miss on either side, they would want the, the tight side to give them cover or maybe they wouldn't be. The only thing with that is that can now be used for the Russians to, to play a draw round into, yeah. the, into the forefoot. Yeah, Eve's no longer needing to be looking to score, I guess. She's looking to to keep things fairly straightforward. Yeah, fairly open. And you can see where the, 
Um, Alina's holding the brush on the edge of the circles there. She's allowing for this big swing. Said earlier on, no prizes for being tight. Got to be out there to okay. the brush. Plenty of handle. And we guarantee that we'll swing towards the end. So Yana had really good draw weight with her first one. She's not needing to play any heavier than her first one. Yeah, the sweepers are well, they're working a little bit now, but they're yeah, they feel that the weight's there, and I think they're just feel. I think it's more about line more one. She's really line got to yeah. I think we should have been sweeping that one a little bit earlier because you're right. I think they thought it was heavy, but yeah. in actual fact, it really wasn't that heavy. When you see where mm. it's ended up now, that probably would have been about the T line. But yeah. sweeping earlier on, then that would have been past the guard. So back to the communication point we made earlier. I think Mary, it's absolutely vital. Eve just checking who's lying second shot, whether the redstone is or her yellow one. So she's chosen to go after the number one shot. Which would make us think that yellow are, are lying second. second shot here. But it gives her an option to roll in behind either the red one or over behind her, both her yellow ones to get a little bit of cover. Main priority here is to make sure a running stone that she plays is in the house. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. <laughs> Rolling behind the red would be perfect. It's great to hear um, the players, isn't it? We've probably talked over most of the chat, which perhaps will be um, annoying our viewers, but it's great to hear the communication and, and all of the thinking and what they're thinking, you know, and I think it's... it's uh, a real boost to be able to hear what the players are, are talking about. Definitely. So there's that communication that we were talking about. Obviously it didn't draw as much as Eve expected so she checked with the sweepers there. Was it a little bit, did she throw it a little bit harder than they were expecting and, and Vicky communicated the time back to her so they'll know either she, w she did throw a little bit up or it just didn't draw as much as they expected down that line. Yeah. And I think listening to the content of what Eve and the girls are saying, you'll notice that it's all positive, you know? A positive frame of mind, looking at the positive outcomes. And that's important in, in any top-class team to focus on these positive things. Yeah. I mean, the it is easier when you're 5-1 up and your team are playing well yep. because there's not too many negatives to even enter your mindset and never mind having to try and push them to the back of your mind but the girls have had a nice steady performance here yep. you know from right from Chelsea um, they maybe haven't been asked as many questions by the, the Russian team than they would have expected to be uh, because we've had possibly more errors at you know at key times yep. but they, they really have played well for their first game out and the sweeping was hard for Line, but it's a good line, and the weight looks good. Yeah, but they want that's to going to call all, the way, for all sure. the way around yeah, there, which nice is a uh, nice shot. Good, good weight, good weight. So, you heard there what you've seen a hack weight looking to remove that red stone and roll over. She's saying if they catch the front yellow, it's not a disaster by that. I think she means she would rub the other one in for to make sure it's second shot. Yeah, However, that might mean that it would leave a, a straightforward takeout for for three. But I think she sees probably about half of that stone, Mary. Yeah, it would depend. I mean, obviously, if she just catches, if she catches kind of less than a half, of the short stone should roll into the house. Yeah. Um, but she's going to want to be past that front one. But I think she'll get a big draw here again. And that's that's going already. So hopefully Sarah can hold Sarah's it. Sarah's holding it. See how quickly it's, it's coming across there, right onto the centre line. So we have got the, the Although, roll in. Yeah. So she's pushed. I think the result was what she said. She pushed that one in for second shot and behind cover. So it's going to be... We need to just have a look to see how the stones are lying to see what... It's a draw, a straightforward draw for two. Well, Alina's got the same shot, you know, same weight. If she throws that again, then uh, she's going to score two. But obviously a little bit more pressure because she now has to beat that one. In the, you know, she has to be in the forefoot. Yep. And her draw weight has been... A little bit erratic, hasn't it? You know. So a chance to 
redeem herself here, same way as she threw her first one, so she should have that feel for the ice. Nice straightforward release. The sweepers, the sweepers are, are certainly are quite relaxed and not looking like yeah. they want to be doing too Our much. Our line looks quite good here though, Mary. She's, She's well out from the centre line at the moment and the sweepers are now beginning this to This one's work. starting to curl a little bit more, but she looks pretty good. It's now down the sweepers to get the weight. And a lovely looking shot there. Two cracking shots here yep. from Alina. Yep. Picked him over. Means a score of two. Draws. Taking the score to 5-3 for Team New Ahead after five ends. Well, that closes the gap, doesn't it? The two there. Yeah, big difference, isn't it? We said that earlier on. They really needed to score a two to get themselves back in the game. Yep. They've done just that. Three ends left. Only two shots in it. Moving into what we could um, class as the, the crucial sixth end. So they'll be looking to try and get as much cover up and force a steal from Team Muirhead to try and get a score themselves so mm. the, the Russians can get right back in this game. Maybe just before the, the next end starts, it's maybe a good point to, to give the viewers an update on, on the other games mm. that are happening. On Sheet G, we've got Gina Aitken playing um, the Canadian team. Oh, no, where are we? Alison Flaxley, and that would appear to be four all after uh, four ends, so that's a tight game there for Gina. And then we've got Jackson playing uh, the other Canadian team, um, Fleury, and they are also tied after after four ends at three all. And Fleming are playing Barbizit, the Swiss team over on sheet C, and. Hannah's team are 4-2 up after 4, so tight games all round it would appear. Yeah, definitely. They'll all be enjoying this uh, swingy and fast ice, I think. So Here we are off again, and uh, Russia have managed to get on. Anastasia's put on a, a guard there, but it's not quite on the centre line, and Eve is, has adopted to come round it. Sorry. Opted, not adopted. <laughs> <laughs> But we're looking so as the way it's, it's fully there, again, isn't yeah. it? Just need to curl a little bit. Finish it a wee bit now with that one one person sweeper. Nice shot there though. A good Open weight again for Chelsea. Interesting call here. Alina opting to remove the Shiela one despite being two shots down. Change of mind. We'll change of mind and we've I gone for the I was going to say freeze. yes, either a freeze or a, a draw is the call here. So Anastasia, school tan being asked to play an interim draw to try and sit right in front of that yellow stone that Chelsea played to the top of the forefoot. The line looks reasonably good. Now down the sweepers to get the weight right. Working this one hard as it comes in front of the house. And sits Just a little line. short. A little short, yeah. It's in play and, you know, it's going to force uh, Eve to do something Just with it, I think. Yeah. So the call is normal. Take out weight to try and remove the red as we face it, looking to probably hit it on the right-hand side and roll behind the red stone. This is Chelsea's first hit, I think, isn't it, of the game? I think she'd won at the first end, although I think she was started that one off a little bit. It's caught the curl. And not an ideal shot. That's an unfortunate result there. So. Just uh, and I think we, you know, we'd said earlier, any, in, you know, if you're inside at all on this ice, and and worse than inside is giving it the start, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. You know, um, you're not gonna. I think once it goes, you can't hold it. No, you're right. You're right. So, a little bit of an advantage passed to the Russian team here. Katarina again asked for an interim. Yes. So the solid yes. game so far. As we mentioned earlier, was here five years ago in the World Junior Championships. Looking to guard up. This one being swept down beside that other guard. So didn't guard the red shot, so gives Eve the chance to remove the guards. And she's going to call a double 
double takeout on the two red guards. Now this is a, a new position for Sarah, isn't it? To be in ripping guards instead of throwing the guards when she's playing second yeah, tonight. Instead yeah. of this is more Vicky's bread and butter shots. But so I bet she's looking forward to it. And a lovely there shot. we go. Perfect. perfect. Yeah, perfectly executed. Sarah staking a claim for permanent position at second. Yeah. yeah. Flaxley, like uh, not Flaxley. <laughs> Chelsea will maybe be looking to see if she's got any <laughs> Scottish grandparentage or any way yeah. that she can move over here. Get a game at lead. She's uh, she certainly played well there so far. I guess the girls make sure that they they practice all these shots because you don't know when a, an injury or an accident could happen and and you've got to be able to obviously um, excel in your own position, but you have to be able to equally you know do as well if you're called on to move up the team or or change position. Absolutely the. These girls spend so much time out with competition, training, they'll have set drills, they'll have various little games and competitions against each other, playing different shots, testing themselves, as you say, to be able to play as many and such a good variety of, uh, of different shots. Yeah. And Sarah position. was uh, a world champion skip at junior level, but you know, she's played uh, obviously up the rink in different positions over the years. so. Um, maybe just calling on the muscle memory there to yeah, to take definitely. her back to these these takeouts. Definitely. So one stone in play. Red stone belonging to Team Victimarova, looking to play a guard in front of that. I think what I've noticed as well after the first end where they were getting used to the speed and the swing. They've certainly adapted, Mary, and, and been much more in control of where to put the brush. Yeah, absolutely. And, much, and, and to control the, the weight of their draws on the ice. So all credit to, to Team Russia for that. Eve's going to continue to remove this guard. And then we'll, if it carries on like this, we'll maybe see Eve face two with her last stone. So Vicky looking to play a takeout to remove this. That must have... Uh, taken a bit more of a, a swing than they expected there yep. or it moved very quickly you know the, the sweeping wasn't an issue and then it became quite a unless she was asking for the run back Mary that's the only maybe, thing I can think maybe. of she's going to be asking for the run back to try and remove the red guard and try and pick the stone out the red stone out at the top of the house I think that's exactly what she was looking for because the, the angle was a little bit staggered so mm. be interesting to see what position this guard ends up in again and that'll determine the choice of shot for Eve to ask Vicky to play. Yeah, it looks... A little bit longer, I think it will be. I think so, yeah. But the, the line just not quite come right over to the centre line this time, so that back stone may be visible. And with such a long guard, as we spoke about earlier, on this swingy ice, you've got the chance to come round, even with a, a hack or a barrier weight. That's just exactly what Eve's calling, a hack weight. Try and remove that red stone and a yellow stone remain in the house to lie one. The guards that long, as you say, with the, the good swinging ice we've got here at Perth this week. That should be a relatively straightforward shot for, for Vicky. Yeah, but this, this one, one seems to be hurling on her, isn't it? That's really going, really going hard towards the centre line there, and in fact over the centre line now. So let's remove the red. So maybe plan, just a touch down for for weight, weight wise, weight. possibly, yeah. But Although that's certainly the the pro error, as you would mm. say, isn't it, to catch it on the the tight side and remove the guard rather than fly by on the on the wide side, connecting with nothing. Absolutely. I think that centre line, there's maybe just a little bit more movement than than Eve is expecting, because that's a couple that they've they've caught maybe the the stone in front rather than the one behind at hack yeah. weight. So, Alina calling to replace the guard, maybe a little bit closer to the house than the, the previous one, and in line with the stone that's in the house. The sweeper's standing back off it at the moment, although they're now thinking about where it's going to end up. Line's important as well. I think they're thinking it's going to overcurl a little bit, so they don't want to sweep it for line. It's certainly much deeper, and, and the, no, I suppose pretty, pretty the problem good. with coming too deep, which that one, I would say, is, is probably perfect, 
uh, distance and line. You don't want to come too deep and give Eve the, the chance of a double. So Eve electing now to play a draw. I think she's thinking she's going to have to draw with her last one anyway, so a chance to score. She's thinking again on the positive side, a chance to score two here. If she can play an out turn draw around both of these red stones and end up in the top of the four foot circle. Again, communication key. Let's listen and see what she's talking about weight. So she'll know the weight. The sweeper will be aware of that. The line is crucial to this shot though. So the call's weight, weight only, so line must be very, very good. It's coming over now though, Pete, isn't it? It's, you know, it's really drawing quickly again off from that, or towards that centre line and they're going to catch the top that one. top stone. Going to catch the top one, roll into my shot. Yeah, weight was good as well, so it probably weight just needed another good. six or eight inches of ice there to get yeah. pie. But it gives the Russian team a chance to play a takeout, a nose hit, Mary. Nose hit would, would suit one. her very nicely, I think. And then that will force Eve to have a choice if she wants to play a draw to on this big swinging ice to go further out on either the internal yeah, or the outer. Yeah, much further out because we're going to have practically the, the you know the four foot lines are. are going to be covered there so yeah yep. she'll be out into the well into the 12 foot and perhaps even beyond to make sure so interesting stuff so take out called from team victim Marova oh, the on it now for and that's looking to move a little bit well she maybe didn't want to move to roll inwards there but that's certainly you know it's now going to force Eve to to play the draw and take a one yeah but I suppose to Eve's advantage what it does is it gives her a chance to play the same shot as she had the last time as you said her weight was good she's just said the same thing a wee inch more ice which means just a little bit more to give her that bit of comfort and interesting there to hear that she thinks maybe that first stone of hers is one that likes to draw a bit more than perhaps the this number eight. I, I guess she's probably playing seven and eight. So we'll soon find out if it does or not. So out turn draw, facing two. Weight looks good. Sweepers are thinking it needs a little bit for weight. The line certainly looks a little bit wider. Line's good. Vicky and Sarah. Yeah, they seem to be quite comfortable the about the weight. The weight's weight. good. Keeping it clean. And it's spot on. Yeah, quite a difference. Maybe it had three or four feet more running, but quite a difference in taking just that little bit more ice, or perhaps it was a stone, as we've yeah. said. There's and every chance that yeah. Chelsea will be given number seven and eight to play now if they think there's any dubiety about the, the running of that number seven. So a very important score there for Team Muirhead, taking the score to 6-3 after six ends. Today's game is brought to you from the city of Perth in this Curling Champions Tour event. Our title sponsors are EDF Energy in conjunction with British Curling, Le Gruyere Switzerland, Perth and Kinross Council, Mercure Hotels and our host Slovakia Leisure. And we're here at Dewar's Ice Rink in Perth, Scotland, all weekend for this city of lady, city of Perth ladies. They're competing for the inaugural international trophy and we've had a great start Mary I think the game earlier on where we had team Drendel and team Grey proved to be an exi exciting battle and we've now moved on to um, a battle between Scotland and Russia and Eve Muirhead certainly has the upper hand with two ends to go in the driving seat three shots to the good at 6-3 so it's vital if the Russian team can repeat what they did playing the same way a couple of ends ago, score a two, and um, narrow the margin and coming into the final end. So Chelsea looking a little bit perplexed. I think her first stone was, was hogged at that end. Yeah, but you know, if they've swapped that stone and, exactly and it given was. it to Chelsea, because she has had ter terrific uh, weight control and has, you know, really not had a problem getting the stones where they want to be. So yep. that is maybe um, more evidence that that stone, if they did swap it, is perhaps one that is 
wants to draw a little bit more and, and stop a bit quicker than the other stones on the sheet. So. Yeah, we know that's a vital part in ensuring that you can pair the stones and be confident with... Sometimes you can use them to your advantage on many occasions, but it's all about the individual being confident with the stones that they have and knowing how, how they behave. Yeah. Which I'm sure you'll find out tomorrow, Mary, in your three games. Yeah. No excuses. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully somebody knows more about what the stones are doing than me. But uh, Anastasia there, uh, possibly a little bit shorter again than she might have wanted to be yeah. with her corner guard. But uh, it's certainly in play and uh, gives them something to work with. So we'll see what Chelsea does with her second stone now. I do hope she told her folks back in Canada that she was going to be sure uh, playing and online and there maybe watching and, yeah. and that would be nice, that would be exciting for them hopefully to, to see us. I'm more interested to know when you're going to play tomorrow, are you fully genned up now in this new sweeping? What happens with one sweeper and everything marries I'm it? hoping that I'm always on the side that doesn't need sweep. Right, okay. I'm going to position myself very strategically, shall we say. Yeah, I like that. Years of experience there Mario. Yep. to play with that and you can encourage the other person to sweep as hard as they want yeah i think um pace yourself for three games remember tomorrow so thank goodness only eight times you should maybe set your goal not to sweep at all for three <laughs> games that would be quite interesting yeah, yeah that would be because uh, you'll get to go in the head as well and give ice that would be so perfect that would be a perfect go. solution wouldn't it if i don't have to sweep at all Absolutely. i'll do a bit of behind the tee i'm you know i'm committed to that anywho this is Another corner guard coming down. It's looking like it's going to curl. Four sweepers encouraging that down, but that's good. A couple of corner guards. Eve's focusing on removing one of these corner guards. And she'll be looking for a relatively straightforward, clean end with not many stones lying around. She'll be quite happy to force one. Yeah, to sweep this. Oh, we're now going for the other side, I think. Take I think it over the work. top. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. There are obviously just maybe bits on the sides mm -hmm. that are swinging a little bit more than either skip is expecting, even with weight. But, you know, it might be that that one got a little helping hand inwards, and uh, time will tell whether whether it's the the ice or whether it was just a wee touch inside. So a little bit of cover up there that the Russians are trying to use to their advantage. Ekaterina Antonova asked for a draw shot. Once it gets over that centre line, you'll notice the stone will start to swing a little bit more. Yeah, they've certainly got um, got better control of their of their weight for these guards now. The, the Russian team, which is which is nice. It's not nice to see the team struggle with. No. Wait, or ice really. Is it, no? Another peel of the guard called here. Good shot, see that? And that one's going to okay. roll all the way out of play, out. I think. She'll want that one out of play or as close to that dividing line as she can. So another guard being called for. By former professional dancer, <laughs> Alina Biktimarova. Yes. Who, I've got to say, has certainly put up a good fight after um, falling 5-1 behind in this game. Scored a nice two with two lovely draws a couple of ends ago. And then looking to start to develop something here. To see if she can score two at the seventh end. You were um, talking earlier, Pete, about Anna Sidorova, the other uh, Russian skip who you reckoned was playing here in the juniors. And your elder sister has messaged us from uh, California, California uh, yep, South Tahoe, to say that actually Anna was an ice skater before she injured her knee at the age of 12. And that was when they turned her towards curling so i was i was kind of right with my they yeah, are using athletes yeah. from different sports and thank you very much for that gem of thank info you. edith thank you edith glad to see you tuning in all the way from california yeah, probably with our feet up and a cup of tea or maybe even a glass of wine in hand too it's early lunchtime yeah, well never, never too early, too early. <laughs> 
So we're going to get another, we're going to get a draw round here, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think trying to use the cover that they put up there earlier on. Come around that red guard. Sweepers again indicating they think it's got plenty weight, although as has been the case over the last few ends, maybe not as fast. And you find that here at Perth. Sometimes it starts quicker. Maybe the speed of the ice will slow up a little bit. So stones that would normally glide on maybe the first couple of ends will start to slow down a little bit, particularly as they come into the house. But that's a good shot. That's a nice draw. And the thing is, with a big swing, even if the ice is keen, you have to throw it that much, you know, so much harder than you expect because it's travelling a much longer distance. You know, if it was going straight down the ice, it would get there an awful lot quicker than having to take the big draw. So, so Vicky being asked for a hack weight take out on that red with the guard being so so long yeah. from um, in distance from the, the head out to the hog line. Yeah. Now this is interesting because yet again it's a hack yeah. weight that they're having to sweep and all the way. Right. We haven't actually made any of these hack weights around no. the guards. We've caught no. everything um, so I like whether it's... I like you're saying we already I like know. you're already part of the team. I feel very much part yeah, of the team. Yeah, you know, yeah, they've welcomed yeah. me already. But um, Yes, Team Your Head <laughs> have had, they've caught these guards, I agree. which, okay, you don't want to be going wide, but you do want to be getting by them, mm. really, so they're either needing to think about a little bit more ice, or, or maybe these hack weights are just a little bit down. Yeah, and I think that's something they'll pick up in the, in the debrief, as they always do after every game, Yeah. talk about what, without labouring it too much, talk about what went well and, and what they can improve on for, for tomorrow's game, so whether that's down to... As you say, a combination of things, it might be the, the reading of the ice, or it might be um, the delivery of the stone, or erring on the right side, there's, there's various different factors in there. Interestingly enough, all opting to take out here the Russians to lie, lie mm. to. Wow. Just overcurled a little bit on it. That's not what they would have hoped for there, for sure. It's not, but... I've got to say, in my view, there was a real opportunity for them to come down and freeze that. It was in the back of the eight foot. There were three shots down. Yeah. They've only got one in the house. It was a r I, can, I can understand why they did it, but to try and give themselves something to develop, maybe a, a two or even a three, yeah. a freeze in that back one was by far and away, I think, the, the, I think you're right. the better I think shot. You're right. And perhaps that's maybe a, a bit of tiredness that just you know makes the judgment a little bit off and, you know, you're thinking a little bit more straightforward than you yeah. should be and, and just trying to get through this game. Because, uh, you know, it's a long time since 3am this morning, isn't it, when they got up? It's only a couple of hours before I got up from my work, Mary, so I'm still wide awake here in the commentary box. We had the chance to sleep on the flight. Well, I think it depends how you look at it. I suppose that's I, true. I, I it is true. Anyway, Eve hitting and trying to hang about, which... Is she going to rolling towards the back of the house? Yeah, that's going to turn in on. nicely. But it actually might be to the advantage of Team Russia because it's behind that corner guard. Alina and has the behind opportunity. The tee. Yeah. yeah, behind the tee. Alina has the opportunity to play a draw around that guard. Lie shot somewhere in front of the yellow stone. So if you chose to remove it, it might jam on. So still a chance to score two at this end. You'll notice on the time clocks in the background there. Counting down, we've got thinking time this weekend. Each team has 32 minutes of their allocated time to complete um, eight ends, which is a great, great concept because it keeps the games moving. We've suffered, I think, over the years, you'll agree, Mary, from sometimes teams getting renowned for taking a little bit longer and making decisions than, than mm. other teams. This is, makes it more of a level playing field. And when you've got a tight schedule of games, it keeps things moving. So all the teams are used to that now. You'll notice the, the Russian team at 11 minutes, I think have uh, used up a little bit more of their allocated time than, than Eve, but neither of them in danger of running out of time, plenty of time left. And they're working this one well. Round the... Is it going to get round the guard? Oh, just, just caught. The guard, but still going to count and have to be removed Second by Second shot. Eve, is it? So, Second yeah. shot. The weight probably wasn't too bad, but just, that, just lacking a little bit of nice. It's interesting, Pete, the the game with the time clocks they're well into their seventh end yeah the games without the time clocks none of them are actually we've not got a score up for their sixth ends so 
it shows that when you mm. don't have the time clocks on you you maybe just take a little longer than really is necessary and it doesn't help anyone yeah yeah so Eve electing to go to the other side of the house to lie to she is and a good call she's not had to play many draws I don't think this game she's not she's not played one in the last then for her for one. Her one, yeah, absolutely. But I think this is the right shot to split the house. Sweepers are on it right away, although Eve's shouting easy, she thinks she's okay. The girls are in control of it though. Wants to make sure she doesn't end up in a spot that could lead to potential double takeout from the Russians for two. So yeah, they maybe want, want to make, make these stones quite level. And that is good, it's reasonably level. Not mm. much. Well, well, the angle's there. I think for the chance of the double, she's got to play. I think you'd have to have a go at it when yep. you're three shots down. You have to have a go at it, you're right, Mary. And I think got to throw quite a heavy weight at it as well for the red to remove that yellow and travel across the house. Mm. Worst case scenario, you want to make sure that you're scoring one. Absolutely. You mm. want to your, your hit and goal, if not the, if not the double. Because there's a big difference if you don't score one. Hit and roll out, you lose one, yeah. four shots down versus two shots down. At two shots down, there's still an outside chance. You might steal two at the last end at four shots down. Game's as good as over. Yeah, I think so. It's going to be a big shot here for... And it'll be interesting to see if Alina can, can play that up weight required here. The sweepers, the sweepers are on, on it straight away. away. Oh, this is... Oh. oh. That'll be two. Mm, well, and I think... Certainly. Two yellows. Two yellow, yes. Yeah. Well, that, I would say, gives a very comfortable cushion. Eight. For the final end. Eight. Three. Five shots up. I think even the team are looking towards the Russians to see if there's going to be an offer of a shaking the hands, which no, it seems, not. seems not. Seems we're going to continue. Well, they've got to go down to that other end of the ice anyway. So. Yeah, they've not been up long enough, that's <laughs> what it is really a thing. They yeah. want to get the, the 24 little yawn there as well from oh. Ekaterina. Yeah, they'll be glad of the long lie tomorrow, I'm sure. Definitely, they're not playing the early session, as we said earlier on, so glad of the long lie. They mentioned they've not even been to the hotel. Have came they not? No, they've not. They came straight from the airport. It was that tight. came straight to the sure. from the airport to here. Yeah, quick, that's not quick, ideal. Quick bite to eat and then and then on the ice. So they they have done all credit to them for keeping on fighting. They, they've played some, some pretty good shots, but just going to lose out in the end. Um, Eve just asking Chelsea, throw the stone through. No point in um, having that in play. No, no that could only... Not five shots up. Only work to their detriment, couldn't it? Yeah. And are the teams staying at the Mercure Hotel? The teams are, yes, yeah, staying at the Mercure Hotel in Perth. Um, a great sponsor and supporter of Curling in Perth, being the main sponsor of the uh, City of Perth Mercure Masters for a number of years, 20 years, I think now, over 20 years, yeah. the hotel has sponsored yeah. it, so... Um, yeah, we're grateful to them and all our other sponsors that we've said this weekend, La Guerilla, Perth and Kinross Council, British Curling and of course Curling Champions Tour and EDF Energy. And I must say Paul Martin and his ice crew here, not only have they put on um, some great ice conditions and stones for this weekend, the, the arena down there, they've got it looking excellent with the logos and the dressing roundabout. Um, so transformed it from club curling this week, Mary. You've been in, as mm. you said, was it um, last night you Two were playing? Two games this week Two in preparation. Week, obviously. In preparation, although I didn't yeah. know I was going to be having a, True. a busy weekend. So as we move towards the um, the final end, do you want to just give us maybe a quick update on, on yeah, well stats? It's, um, well, the last time I looked at the stats, I think, was, was it after four? And the, the team stats haven't changed. We're still sitting with um, Team Your Head at 79% and, and Team Russia just slightly behind at 72 But But um, as we're saying, it really depends where these mistakes are coming 
and the Vicky and Eve are playing 86 and 79 against their um, third and skip opposition, Jana and Alina at 71 and 70. So that's, you know, you can't be 10 or, or so uh, percentage points behind and, and usually making um, a good game of it. But the, the front end have been solid for both teams. We've had uh, Chelsea, our super sub, playing again still at 75% and Sarah in her um, out of position position of second at 73 so really good uh, stats there quite solid and the uh, Anastasia and Ekaterina who we have said have both had reasonable games for, for Russia are both at 73% so we've got quite nice stats I would say quite mm. solid stats across the board but just mistakes at the wrong times yep. chance to Double, oh, ne nearly made that. Very that. nearly. And I think on that point, Mary, you're right. I think uh, we said it already. It, it, it applies equally to other sports as well as curling. If you outplay your opposite number more often than not, you're going to win the game across the team. You know. Mm. And as you've said there, I think um, head to head, Eve's team probably with the exception, I think, of uh, maybe one Sarah and their opposite number that are level. Mm -hmm. Every single member of Eve's team is, yeah. um, has got a better percentage than the, than the Russian team. And that's borne out in the, the score as we see this moving towards the last few stones in this game in the second round of the um, City of Perth Ladies International. It's a catchy title, isn't it? Did I? I can't even remember if I said it right there. <laughs> City of yes. Perth Ladies International. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right on it. Good. So we focusing on just removing one guard from the side. On the right-hand side as you look at it calling the sweeping out of the hand from Sarah Reid oh and a nose hit from Sarah which gives a little bit of encouragement to the Russians however I think if I was Eve at this point all you're doing is ensuring that you're counting these red stones going past you as soon as they're four in the backboard the game's won and that's it's over right. yeah and that's what the, the, the team will be focusing on. It's, um, you know, obviously you want to make all your shots, but sometimes when there is that five shot cushion, it's, it's not, you lose the, the edge maybe to, mm. to make these accurate peels. But I'm sure Sarah will be disappointed that that one didn't, didn't roll away. And here we have a draw round behind the, the cover. A nice shot. So I think if you can see any of that red, she'll elect to try and pick that one out, feeling that if they remove the guard, that's the, the second best option. And just to talk a little bit before we finish up tonight, Mary, about the format for this weekend, we've got four sections of five teams. They play every other team in the section. So yep, they have robin. four games in the round robin. That takes us through to some tiebreakers at two o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Perhaps. If required, I suppose. You might so not. You know. right. So it's the top two from each section progress yeah, to the quarterfinals. Yeah. And then the, I think the tiebreakers are actually to give everybody else another game and then determine ranking okay. within the section. So yeah. I think it was felt with the teams travelling so far to come and give them four ga guaranteed right. five games. It would yes, be a good I thing think to do. Right. So, so I think that happens then. we have. Um, so the teams not involved in the quarters play another game yeah. if, if there is no... Uh, if the, if the tiebreakers aren't required. And then the quarterfinals play on Sunday night, uh, Saturday, Saturday night. Saturday evening, yep. And then we move into Sunday with semi-finals at 9 o'clock and the final at 1 p.m. I think that's a good idea to have the, the quarterfinals on the on the Saturday evening. I think the Masters have moved to that, haven't they? Rather than have the quarter, semi and final all on the last day. Do you no, have them? We, we do. We do have the quarter, semi and final on the last day. We, used to, we actually used to have the C final in the morning on the Sunday as well. So you could right. potentially have had four games. Yeah. So we moved too that much. back because that, that was too much. Yeah. You've got a bigger field, of course, in the yeah. Masters. So maybe to get through the game. 32, 32 teams. So let's just let's just um, jump back to Vicky. Ooh. Moving that, that's a great shot. Yeah. <laughs> Moves the guard and takes, it out of the takes house. the one in the house. So. Which Does that mean that we're now... No, I think we're going to play the end out. I think... Team Russia are going to play the end out. Mm. Or Thinking about it. Well, the only reason for that is because it's around Robin. There may well be I don't know, shots I and stones come into it. or If teams are tied uh, following the round Robin, I think that's when you have to play tiebreakers. 
um, but also ranking for your tiebreakers are determined by the draw shot challenge. No. So Eve's now telling her that actually she could still. Mm. So there's no ends and shots don't count then, Mary. Yeah. When it comes to that. So Eve's taken her glove off to encourage the handshake. A little bit of maths <laughs> being discussed by both teams, <laughs> and that's ended up in hands being shaken. I think Eve before the game would admit that maths was maybe not her uh, strong suit, so that was. Well, we'll be testing that as the weekend goes on. Goes on. <laughs> hey, I'll maybe bring in my son's maths homework. <laughs> see if we can get her to do a couple of. Qu I think he's on to algebra now, Mary. Never is. I could never ever do that. Anyway, <laughs> that was a good opening win for Team Muirhead here, City of Perth, Ladies International, over Team Bit Kimarova from Russia. Okay, do just before, just before, yeah, I think we, we finish off for this evening. Um, as you watch some of the highlights of the game, we can just have a quick recap. There's been swaps of two in the first six ends, back and forward, between um, Team Gina Aitken and Team Flaxy from Canada. It's currently sitting at six shots all, playing the seventh end. As we move across to uh, Jackson and Fleury, again, they're tied up, six all, playing the seventh end and it's currently Hannah Fleming 7-4 to the good against team Barbazat from Switzerland as they play the seventh end so a couple of ends to go in the remaining games here in the second draw thanks very much to everyone for tuning in I uh, hope you join us again we're on air tomorrow morning at nine o'clock team Hannah Fleming against team Sophie Jackson, an all Scottish encounter. Yeah. We look forward to welcoming you all back for the third round of this wonderful event. Thanks, Mary, for thanks, Pete. That was race. that was and good we'll fun. We'll maybe um, join forces again as the weekend goes on. And good luck to you tomorrow. Thank you. Straight to bed now. That's nearly ten o'clock. Get a good yeah. sleep. Yeah, let's hope and so. Um, Eve will have our work cut out we'll for our deciding what ice to give me tomorrow. I think. So you'll have a three game day and I'm sure you'll do very well all the best and uh, I'll catch up with you later on yep thank you okay yeah.